This bulletin is brought to you by Good Morning Vihalia. Enjoy the warmth and indulge in the deliciousness. Hello ladies and gentlemen, previously we reported that the bestseller book Billion Dollar Whale will be made into a movie. This was hinted to us by one of the authors, Tom Wright, who was in town recently, but he was tight-lipped about it and who would produce the film. But today, it looks like the secret is out. SK Global's Ivanhoe Pictures label, you know, the same crazy rich Asians who made crazy rich Asians, have purchased the rights to the book co-written by Wall Street Journal reporters Bradley Hope and, well, Tom Wright. But get this, who's going to be the producer? Well, it looks like another crazy rich Asian from home is going to be the one. In the press release issued by Ivanhoe Pictures, it stated that veteran Malaysian-born actress Michelle Yeoh will be producing the film under her new deal with the company. She had previously posted a picture on Facebook calling it a, quote, brilliantly reported new book. I know what you're thinking, is this Barisa National supporter going to give us a fair picture as the producer of the film? Well, Michelle was a Bond girl, and if there's anything that the 007 films have taught me, it's to never trust the Bond girl. As of 2013, she's a BN girl too. Michelle made an appearance at a BN event on the 20th of April 2013, shortly before the 13th general elections, saying that she hopes that then Prime Minister Najib Razak would quote, would still remain as Prime Minister and I ask all of you to give him a strong mandate. Najib is one of the figures in the book who is said to be the one who enabled the protagonist, controversial businessman Lo Tek Jo, to rise to such infamy. A leader whose love and commitment for our country has no limit. A leader who embraces our differences with great respect and who will ensure wise changes to make our country and our people even stronger. A leader who is our Prime Minister and who, I hope from the bottom of my heart, will remain so. To our knowledge, Michelle has never rescinded her support for the Barisan National on record, so there's really no telling if she still supports them or whether she has had a change of heart. However, the move was met with some backlash today, starting with Centre to Combat Corruption and Cronyism C4 Executive Director Cynthia Gabriel, who branded Michelle as a cheap opportunist, saying that people like this should have no place in the new Malaysia. Wow, drastic! Cynthia was a member of the special committee to probe the 1MDB scandal set up following the May 9th election. She asked mana ada integrity and that before regime change, Michelle was all over Najib and company. Later, Sarawak Report editor Claire Rucastle brown blasted the authors of the book for inking a deal with Michelle on the same grounds. She then said that people should watch the other upcoming film, The Sarawak Report, for the real story, most likely referencing her website and her recently published book under the same name. The Commercial Crimes Investigation Department Chief Amar Singh today said that Najib has failed to substantiate a claim that 160 million ringgit was the total amount seized across raids at the pavilion residence linked to the former premier. According to Amar, Najib lodged a report making that claim. However, the police claim that the figure is 114 million ringgit, not 160 million. He also highlighted that Najib filed the report a whole week after the police issued the statement on the amount. Amno, Najib's party, had also filed a writ of summons at the High Court last week, claiming that 43.3 million ringgit was among the money that went missing during the raids. Amar said that Najib should have initiated the legal action instead. He also stated once again that Najib is unable to substantiate the amount. Reporters then asked Amar about the whole billion dollar whale movie thing and the book, and this is how he responded. Uh, I'm about to read the book, yeah. Probably they need to call me to act in the part for the race. <laughs> <laughs> I know you wanted me to say that, probably they need to call me. Yeah, keep that in mind. And Michelle, if you're watching this, chances are you're not. You might want to consider this fine gentleman. So let's move on. The Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission Act 2009, which empowers the MACC as a body, allocates a maximum jail term of 20 years. Now, the MACC Chief Commissioner Shukri Abdul thinks that there should be something a lot more drastic than just 20 years behind bars for those found guilty of corruption. Kalau Tun Mahathir kata, uh, kalau boleh hukum bunuh nak hukum bunuh saya sokong lah okay. memang saya sokong mm -hmm. uh, hukum bunuh uh, pelaku perkurasan sebab di negara China mm -hmm. memang jalan uh, hukuman bunuh mm -hmm. uh, tapi di Malaysia ni kita tak adalah sampai peringkat tu dan even uh, kajian sekarang pun dalam perancangan untuk menghapuskan hukuman bunuh mm -hmm. kepada uh, 
kepada jenayah-jenayah lain. Dan dalam akta SPRM 2009, maksimum hukum hukuman rasuah ada se, se, setinggi 20 tahun. Itu maksimum. Hmm. Dan uh, bagi saya, kalau minta pandangan saya, patut pelaku rasuah ini dikenakan hukuman sebat. Well, Shukri, unfortunately, this country is more concerned with caning lesbians and sex workers. Anyway, as we move on, nomination for the parliamentary seat of Port Dixon will take place tomorrow morning. So far, the contenders that are lining up are PKR President-elect Anwar Ibrahim and independent candidate Stephen Chan Keng Leong, also known as YouTube on Twitter. As of last night, PAS announced that they would throw their hat in the ring as well with retired Lieutenant Colonel of the Malaysian Royal Air Force, Mohammad Nazri Mokhtar. Then this afternoon, former Negeri Sembilan Menteri Besar Isa Samad said that he wants to join the race too. But hey, didn't Amno say that they were boycotting this election? Indeed they did. He said that he had sent in his resignation letter to the Teluk Kemang Amno Division two days ago so that there is no issue of him being sacked as he's no longer an Amno member. Whatever happened to Amno for life? Hmm? He said the reason that he quit the party was because he wanted to contest in the by-election. The seat was previously held by PKR's Daniel Balagopal Abdullah, who vacated the seat to make way for Anwar's possible return to the Dewan Rakyat. Malaysia's first multi-grains brand. The champion is... Good morning! All right, time to wrap up for the week. Let's revisit Shukri Abdul's message earlier. Should those guilty of corruption be subject to capital punishment or whipping? These are really inhuman ways to treat people, even criminals. But on the other hand, I think 20 years behind bars is way too light a sentence for those found guilty of billion dollar corruption. What say you? Should the penalty for corruption be increased and made more severe? Perhaps, you know, solitary confinement? Straight jacket or something like that? Or are you with Shukri? And do you believe that the electric chair is the answer? Let's talk about it in the comments or on Twitter. Don't forget to like, share, comment, follow and subscribe. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thank you for watching and have an amazing weekend.